Hey, what is up everybody? This was an awesome match. This was a damn good main event. Honestly, when you look at the Survivor Series show for 2014 as a whole, um, honestly, you know, he had the four-way kick it off, you know, Miz and Miz Dow winning the Tag Team Championship. Um, that was something. And then he had the um, four-way um, uh, traditional Survivor Series match with the four baby faces going over Team Page. Bray Wyatt versus Dean Ambrose was a snooze fest setting up next uh, next month's TLC match, more than likely. Adam Rose and the Bunny was Adam Rose and the Bunny. Can't really rely on them to have a great match against Slater Gator on pay-per-view. Uh, Nikki Bella and Brie Bella winning the uh, Divas Championship. Who knows where they're going to go from there. I have no clue. Uh, but when it all came down to it, everybody knew that Team Cena versus Team Authority uh, was basically the reason why this was a pay-per-view and why this was the show you were going to watch. 45 minutes of greatness here. Honestly, when I looked at the clock and I saw how much time was being saved for this match, I thought that it was a lot for uh, basically a, a, a WWE pay-per-view main event. Um, but they made every minute of account, and then basically they, they, they were able to have this match and basically be able to um, really keep this as a whole as, as a good show. Um, I, it's it's sort of like one of those um, you know old school WWE shows where basically like they would have a kick-ass main event and make you forget about everything that went along with it. And it's sort of like when you talk about WCW, you would have a kick-ass mid-card and then the main event come with Stink to join out. And when the show was over, you're like, oh, fuck, I just wasted my money. Forgetting about how much fun you had watching those first shows because you really paid for this main event. And the main event tonight delivered. Team Cena going up against Team Authority in the 5-on-5 five -five traditional uh, Survivor Series. Uh, you know, everybody knows all about the stipulations that basically if Team Authority loses, uh, they're, they're re stripped and removed. Basically, the new stipulation that was added tonight by Vince McMahon was that basically if, if Triple H and Stephanie were ever to be brought back into power, and it would be John Cena was the man that was going to have to appoint them to that position. Vince McMahon himself was not going to be able to step in and put them into, the, into that job because it's part of the contract for this match. Team Cena getting the win there is really going to help them out. When it all came down to it, I love the fact that when they got up on the on the on the ring to start this match, and Big Show and Mark Henry were fixing to square this off. This easily could have been a, an easy mid-card match. Uh, they added these guys because they're big name and, and their former uh, times as WWE champion. Uh, well, Mark Henry was World Heavyweight Champion, and, and, and Big Show is one of just about every belt that's ever been and, you know, held the man, except for the European title, I believe, in WWF. Um, and Triple H and Stephanie were on the ring steps, basically showing how important this was. Basically, like, you know, Triple H would be reaching out for a tag like he was adding himself into this match. And, um, you know, as, as this match got started, Big Show just fucking knocked out Mark Henry, just right there in the middle of the ring with a big knockout punch. Um, you know, it was, it, you know, sort of like the talk about their feud. It was sort of like they put an emphasis on how important this match was. The second uh, Mark Henry was, was pinned. Uh, Triple H jumped down from ringside. He was pissed. He went over and sat by the announcers. Just put his head in his hands. Just, you know, you could tell you how really big this match was. How Triple H really believed that he was really being removed from power if he lost this match. And seconds into this match, he's already down 5-4. to four. Um, there, There's a lot of questions about how a lot of these guys that were going to be involved um, uh, in this match were basically going to be, you know, um, pinned or, or submitted or anything like that. Rusev and Ryback, two of the biggest things about these guys is basically that they don't lose. And, uh, you know, if you find a way, you know, they both have to get eliminated from this match, or at least one of them does in order to find out what's going down. Um, you know, into this match, Ryback was the first member uh, eliminated from Team Cena. He was pinned after a curb stomp from Rollins, followed by a super kick from Rusev. So he's got two finishers back to back, so it's, he's not looking really like a bitch as being the first guy that gets dumped from here. The match went on along for a long, long time uh, before finally um, uh, Ziggler and Rusev were fighting uh, outside of the ring, and they both started to knock each other out. Uh, and you can tell that it was going to be a long time before they were able to get up. Rusev um, sort of did a diving move. Uh, through the announce table, it was a really cool spot. The way that they had the camera set up, and you saw the actual uh, table just, you know, you know, just disintegrated down to the floor. I thought it was really, really cool. Um, uh, Rusev was not able to make it back into the ring before the ten count. Uh, basically, you had Triple H, uh, you had um, uh, Mercury, and you had Jamie Noble. Uh, trying to pick up uh, Rusev and get him back into the ring in time, and they weren't able to do it. Uh, I thought it was kind of stupid how basically Ziggler was laying there on the outside, and you could basically see him getting up to get back into the ring. And none of these three guys either, you know, tried to attack or hold back Ziggler uh, from getting back into the ring. He, he was able to get back in. Rusev was counted out, and, and from there uh, we went to uh, Eric Rowan, uh, eliminated um, by uh, Luke Harper. 
uh, basically as they brawled. Nothing was really that big from there. Basically, this was making the match um, three on. Uh, uh, it was making the match three on three at the time. Ziggler was dead on the outside. Cena was sort of dead on the inside. And Big Show got into the match to start it out. And basically, you had Kane, you had Rollins, and you had Luke Harper looking at him for some reason. I'm not sure. Big Show decided this was not his night to fight. Um, you know, he, he asked Cena to join him in the fight. He told Cena, get up, get up. And the second Cena got up, Big Show just fucking knocked out um, fucking um, John Cena. They left him laying. Uh, I like the fact that um, nobody really knew what was going on at this point. Basically, Seth Rollins covered Big Show, but the whole time he was covering... Um, he, I'm sorry, uh, Seth Rollins covered Cena, but the whole time he was looking up at Big Show, like, waiting, like, is it a trap? Are you going to attack me? Why would you do this? Why would you help us? Uh, moments after John Cena was eliminated, um, basically, um, you know, Big Show walked over uh, through the crowd, stuck his hand over the side, and shook Triple H's hand. Triple H looked like he had no clue what was going on at this point. Uh, but once he shook his hand, he started, like, yeah, yeah, and Big Show joined the authority. At this point, he had to eliminate himself uh, from the ring. So basically, he just got out of the out of the ring and walked all the way into the back, uh, being counted out, leaving this as a three-on-one match, uh, basically with uh, Seth Rollins, uh, Kane, and Luke Harper uh, left to fight against Dolph Ziggler. And I thought that the deck was stacked against him, that there was no way he was going to be able to come about this. But honestly, at the time, I was thinking it's going to come down to Ziggler and Rollins. We just have to find a way where, where uh, Dolph Ziggler is going to be able to overcome the odds and over uh, and, and, and eliminate Kane and Luke Harper from there. Um, basically, it was Dolph Ziggler hitting Kane with the zigzag, and then he was able to roll up uh, Luke Harper in pretty fast, fast fashion. And then it came down to Seth Rollins uh, versus uh, um, Dolph Ziggler at the time. But basically... Um, the, as, as this match was going on, basically, uh, Ziggler kept on, you know, just having ways to, to win this match against Seth Rollins. And from there, basically, it was Triple H pulling out the referees, attacking the referees. It was Ziggler basically having a match against Noble and Mercury uh, on the inside before, basically, even Triple H got into the ring and he was getting involved. And uh, that is when Stinger decided to come back from the back. I know everybody's pumped to see Sting. I don't want to be the one guy throwing eggs at it, but it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. Boy, this guy who's never been involved in WWE has, you know, this step up to the plate where he's going to stand up for Dolph Ziggler and, and Team Cena. Why is he mad at the authority? Basically, is he going to blame the authority for holding him down, making him go work in TNA for years? Uh, I, I know everybody's pumped to see Sting, and I don't want to be the one guy pointing out that it doesn't really make any sense. But that's exactly what I was thinking as the whole thing was going down. Uh, Sting and Triple H, I guess that's the overwhelming number one thing to be going down at WrestleMania now on everybody's mind. I would like to give a shout-out to my good buddy, Jim Nye 888 who did buy his WrestleMania ticket, so I'm all fired up to see him. Good job, Cena. Or I might as well call you Cena. You and your orange shirt from 2010, buddy. Hope you wear it to WrestleMania. Enjoy it. It's been a few years since you've been to one, and it's good to see you back on the leaderboard there with Miguel over Ravi and me over the most WrestleManias. I was going to tie you if you didn't show up, so I'm glad you're going. Um, but basically, um, Cena was able to... Um, uh, not Cena. Cena was in the back. Uh, Sting was able to, to get in there, and basically he punched. Um, uh, Triple H and Triple H sold it like it was the first time he ever got punched into his life. I don't know if he was supposed to punch punch him and turn him right in uh, to the Scorpion Death Drop, uh, but basically, you know, yeah, Triple H sold it. Then Sting sort of grabbed him, spun him around, sort of selling the fact, hit him with it, and then he ran over and uh, he grabbed um, uh, Ziggler, put him on top of uh, Seth Rollins, and um, the referee finally got back into the ring as Sting was walking to the back, and it was a one, two, three. And it was over. But I don't even know why Ziggler and uh, Rollins were laid out on the floor. Basically, I think everybody was supposed to be thinking about Sting and Triple H, and that's what it really, really came down to. And they just needed a way to finish the match, and, and Ziggler had to be the one to pin somebody. But to me, I just was like, uh, I don't know. But I'm fired up. I'm not saying that it was bad. I'm just saying it didn't really make sense to me. Um, but basically, Dolph Ziggler was the ultimate uh, survivalist. Uh, a lot of people are going to be thinking that this is a big deal for him and he should be shooting up the card. Ziggler, to me, honestly, is a guy that I don't think can stand up to Brock Lesnar in a fight. So that's going to be something to believe about. But I'm also the same guy who laughed at Eddie Guerrero going up against Brock Lesnar with people thinking that Eddie Guerrero had a shot at No Way Out. And look at that. Eddie Guerrero made his career by, by beating Brock that night. Then he went on to WrestleMania beating uh, Kurt Angle as well as WrestleMania 20. So, uh, you know, guys going up against Brock Lesnar, on my mind, 
you know, if, if uh, they can get into Brock's paybook, I'm sure that he, or pocketbook, I'm sure that he'll uh, lay down for just about anybody and make anybody's career. Uh, but uh, Ziggler, I think this is a big exclamation point in his career, probably one of the biggest wins of his time. Uh, once Ziggler made it to the stage, Cena came out and grabbed him, and, and they, they celebrated for a second. But I think everybody is supposed to be looking at Sting as such, as such a big occurrence of something going down, um, you know, for the future. So, peace out, everybody. Check this out. I'll see you guys uh, down the road. And uh, tomorrow night, Monday Night Raw, later the Cable Guy and Santino make their return. I guess there's more better stuff to look forward to than that, but that's all I can think of.